I got a question from a YouTuber about power supplies in these early radios that have both positive and negative outputs. And here's a close-up of the power supply. And you can see that we've got chassis ground not at the bottom of the power supply or at the capacitors but it's about well it's two resistors up in other words we've got 110 ohms and then 30 ohms and that's where they put the ground well I've supplied a link to all this information and it's from Nostalgia Air so you can find all this information in this PDF file. Here's another page and at the top it shows that wire wound resistor. And this is the connection that goes to chassis ground. I'm going to start right here and figure out what the voltage should be at this point. Here's a close-up of the power supply and what we're interested in is what should this read with the negative on chassis ground and the positive lead at the top of R21. Well, there's several drawings that we can use. And we'll start right here. If you take a look at the capacitor to the left at the top, where it says 300 volts, that's actually the second filter capacitor. In another drawing, it is labeled. It doesn't happen to be labeled here. Also, if you take a look, we see a minus 16. That's the other end of the capacitor. So we've actually found two voltages here that we can use. So from ground to the top of R21, we've got 300 volts. And at the other end, at the bottom of the capacitor, we have minus 16 volts. The next connection down I've lit up in green and what I'm looking for is a path to actually the least resistance and if you follow that green you, we go through the primary of an IF transformer it's only 5 ohms over to the plate of the 6K7 the first IF amplifier and here's a drawing that shows the first IF amplifier and the plate and it shows the plate voltage at 250 volts so now we can label this connection between ground and this terminal as 250 volts. The next terminal down I've lit up in green and it goes over to the same tube but it is the second grid so we go back to the drawing. The second grid is labeled at 100 volts. So at this connection, we should read 100 volts. The next terminal down goes over to the cathode of the audio amplifier, a 6F5. So we'll go back to our drawing on the other page 
And here's the cathode, but it's a little bit hard to read. It's 1.0 maybe, or maybe that's a 6 or an 8. It's really hard to read. But there's another page that we can look at. That's right here. And if we take a look at the 6F5 audio amplifier, we'll see that the cathode voltage to ground should be 1.5 volts. So now we can label this from ground to that terminal as 1.5 volts. The next terminal is below the ground connection, so it should be negative. And if we follow that up, we go through a rather high resistor to a cathode of the 6H6. Well, if you take a look at the 6H6 information, there's nothing there. So what I did was I decided to use Ohm's Law here. We know that at the bottom of the capacitor in that 110 resistor, we've got minus 16 volts. We've got a 110 ohm resistor a 30 ohm resistor. Together that's 140 ohms and if you use Ohm's law you can find the current through that and then use that current and the 30 ohm resistor and you will get about a minus 3.43 volts. Now we have identified the voltages to expect at each one of the terminals on that wire wound resistor. But I do want to point out that this particular connection is a part of the AVC circuit of this radio, the automatic volume control. And here I have put in blue the audio from the detector and how that works is the higher the audio the more C33 on the left will be charged negative and that negative will reduce the amplification of that 6K7 Here's a little bit closer look at that circuit. Now, C33, if you look at the uh, top of that, uh, the wire that goes to the left, and you can trace this out, will go to a resistor, and then it'll go through a coil, and then it'll go through a switch, but it'll eventually end up on the grid cap, which is the control grid of the RF amplifier. So it also will increase the negative voltage, you know, if it's a strong station, which will reduce the amplification of the first tube also. Here are the voltages that we found on the terminals of that tapped wire wound resistor. At the top we have 300, then the next tap should be 250, next tap down should be 100, next one down should be 1.5 volts, then the one below ground should be negative 3.43 about and it's also the AVC circuit. And then 
at the bottom of the capacitor, it should be minus 16 volts. Thanks for watching.